and hello everybody welcome to the mango growth my name is Krisha and today I'll be showing you how to use an OCR order on the BitGet exchange to execute any conditional buy orders and if you're wondering Krisha what in the freaking world do you mean by that don't worry we'll be going over that but let's just break this down okay in layman terms what I'm trying to say to you is that hey if you are a busy person but you just want to get in your trade on any cryptocurrency I'm going to show you how to do that based on the conditions that you have, okay? And you don't even have to be on the computer for this. There is very little trade management on your part. You just set in the bid and you walk away. And depending on which one hits, you got your position. Okay, so I'll be showing you how to use an OCR order to get in those conditional bids. So um, I just want to let you guys know this is actually video two of the OCR order series because I spoke so much in my previous video, I had to break it up. So in the first video, I actually went over scenario one where you can actually use an OCR order to set in either uh, to set in a stop loss and to take profit on any one of your given positions. OK, so you can use an OCR order for that, too. And I'll be linking that video towards well at the on the end cards of this one, as well as in the description. That way you guys can navigate to that if that's what you're looking to do. Okay, but uh, well, for the agenda of this video, we'll be focusing on conditional buy orders using the OCO feature on the exchange. Cool beans, cool beans. With that, let's jump in. Um, and now, of course, guys, I will be including timestamps in the description below. So if you find that you're out of time or if I'm talking too much for you, well, just skip to well the timestamp that is appropriate for you. Okay, so now OCO order scenario two. What we're going to be talking about here is conditional orders. Now, what exactly do I mean by, well, conditional orders? OK, and specifically what we're going to be talking about here is buy orders. OK, now, why am I only going to be focusing on buy? Because the way BitGet has sort of released this feature, it's only on the spot exchange for now. OK, so um, the one sort of instance I would use the OCO order is um, for conditional bids is, well, to buy any asset that I'm looking at. Because the thing about selling um, conditionally is that you need a position first to be able to sell. If you don't have a position, you can't sell something you don't really have, right? So we'll be only focusing on buy order since the feature is only available on the spot um, interface, okay, spot I. Um, okay, cool, so conditional orders. What the hell is a conditional order anyways? Well, let's just say in this instance right now, it is March, 7th 2023 bitcoin is sitting somewhere around 23k okay now let's say that i have a bullish bias on bitcoin right now okay i am bullish which i am by the way i am bullish right now on bitcoin and uh, i have a bullish bias but i don't have my well i didn't get my long-term allocation in right now i'm sitting here price has pumped from 15k to 23k and i'm here left without my freaking position now i'm just waiting on any pullback all right however i got a nine to five job that i need to get to Right, so I might not even be on the computer to execute a bid if I do even get a pullback. But let's just say if Bitcoin pulls back to twenty thousand dollars, a twenty k, I want to be a, be a buyer right here. Okay, I want to buy Bitcoin here. However, there could be an instance where Bitcoin does not get down to twenty k. As right now, guys, Bitcoin has been freaking resilient at, at around twenty three, twenty two k. So Bitcoin might not might not even get down to twenty thousand dollars. Instead, what it could do is get up to twenty five k and then move forward from there. Okay, so I have a thesis. I basically tell myself that okay, hey, if Bitcoin comes down to twenty k, I want to be a buyer here. However, if it gets up to twenty five point five k. I think we're breaking a major region of resistance, okay? After which, I think 23K and 20K, price coming back down there is freaking grim as hell. At 25.5K, I'm saying Bitcoin basically sees continuation to the upside all the way up to $40,000, okay? At 25.5K, I want to be a buyer. If price gets up there, I'm not missing that bid. I'm not going to miss out on the rest of this move. I'm going to be a buyer here as well, all right? So now that's the condition. If price comes down to 20k, buy. Okay, if it comes down to 20k, buy. However, if it comes up to 25.5k, I think we're breaking out from there. I want to be a buyer on the breakout. Okay, so this is my condition. Now we can use an OCO order to execute a bid on these conditions. Okay, that way, if you are at work, your bid will go through under these conditions. However, that said, what does an OCO order really translate to? 
An OCR order means one cancels the other. So now depending on which one of your bids goes through first, the other one gets canceled. So say if your pullback bid at 20K goes through first, that was that's the first bid to get executed, your bid at 25.5K gets canceled out immediately. Right? However, on the flip side, say Bitcoin rallies from here all the way up to 25.5K, right? That's the first price to get hit. That's where your bid gets executed. Your other bid at $20,000 gets canceled out. Alrighty, one cancels the other. That said, I feel like I'm being a bit irresponsible here. Now, when you're setting in an OCO order for conditional bids, guys, it's not like throwing darts in thin air, okay? That's not what we're trying, trying to do here. Um, when you're looking at conditional buys and you're looking at support and resistance, there are techniques behind this, and that is primarily hinged on TA, okay? Technical analysis. Now, for those of you who've been following me for some time, you guys know my thoughts on TA. I think TA leads everything else. All of those big thought leaders that you see out there, all of the fundamentals that you're probably evaluating on the broader landscape, that shows itself first on the charts. Now, if there's any resource I would recommend on really learning your TA, that is going to be the Mango Seed Trading Program. Now, I have learned everything I know from the Mango Seed Trading Program. And if there's anything I would recommend, it is that program. Okay, now, of course, I'm not your instructor, but Sean is, and he's freaking brilliant. Now, you don't need to take that from me. Just get into the Discord chat, speak to the other students, look at the testimonials, and, well, make a call for yourself. But in addition to that, guys, if you guys are looking to jump in, I suggest checking out the curriculum to see if you're up for the challenge. Right? There is a time investment, but I promise you one thing. You're going to come out knowing how to read any and every chart out there. It is what's going to set you up for the next bull run to come. Okay, so it's not the thing about TA, guys. It's not just about, well, you know, getting those profits. It's about keeping your profits when you get up to those crazy freaking levels, right? TA is what's going to help you be objective during those market phases that's basically telling you to sell your bags when it's time. Take those profits when it's time. So this is to say that make sure you're paying special attention to the TA when you are putting in conditional bids such as these. Alrighty, with conditional bids, now let's get into the OCO order card. I'm going to pull it up right here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and first break down these fields for you before we go ahead and execute this bid on the BitGit exchange. Okay, that way you can actually see it in action and how it usually plays out when it gets executed. Um, so now just to show you, just to tell you exactly what is what here. Okay, that way there's no confusion when we get on over to the exchange. The fixed price right here, okay, is going to be that pullback price. Right, that's our pullback price. Now remember, this is our scenario, right? Okay, there we go. Um, if price pulls back to 20K buy, however, if we get up to 25.5K, I think we're going up further. In that case, also get that breakout bid because I just want my position in at that point. Okay, so this is going to be that pullback at 20K. So that's going to be the fixed price, okay? Now this region right here, these two, these two fields, the trigger price and the order price, that is going to be that, that sort of breakout buy um, hypothesis that you have. And I'm calling it the breakout buy price that we am able to distinguish it to between, well, the pullback price. Okay, now it does not, you can allocate a different sort of term to it, but for, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to be calling it the breakout buy price. Okay, now the trigger price is the price at which you say that, oh man, I think Bitcoin has broken out of a major region of resistance. I want to get in my position because I think we're going up. Now that price for us is 25.5K. That's going to be our trigger price. Okay, if price gets up to 25.5K, BitGet, please place a buy order for me on the order book. Now the order price is the price at which you buy at. All right, so if price goes up to 25.5K, I'm telling BitGet, hey BitGet, price is at 25.5K, do me a favor, I want to get in a position right here. Right. So now this order price, BitGet is essentially asking you, saying that, hey, okay, fine, you want to get in a buy. Um, what price do you want to buy in at? Um, so at this point, I'm like, okay, 25.5K, place a buy order for me at 25.49K. Alrighty. And then you just basically set in the amount, say we want to buy a whole one Bitcoin here, and that is going to be our order. Okay, that's going to be our conditional bid. Now, the one limitation to that is that the amount right here, you, there's only one amount. There's a fixed amount. You cannot have a different amount for, well, the pullback price and a different amount for the trigger price. Okay, it's going to have to be the same one BTC. That's why you only have um, one field for the quantity that you execute on. 
All right, so now that you have an understanding of what it is that we're trying to execute here, let's get on over to the exchange and actually put in a conditional bid on Bitcoin. Okay, now, of course, if there's anything that you're confused about, let me know in the comment section below and I will try and clarify any doubts that you may have. Alrighty, so with this, let's jump into the exchange. All right, perfect. Now, here we are on the BitGet exchange. Now, um, we're about to execute our OCO conditional buy order. Now, guys, the OCO, what is the full form of that? One cancels the other. I am about to show you how to execute the OCO order live in action. That way, when you are executing your orders, you have a bit of confidence. Because when it comes to execution, ultimately, it's about confidence. Being confident in your execution that's going to get you into the right trades, the right trade setups, also help you when you have to exit your positions. So um, let's go ahead and set in that OCO order. Now, guys, um, I will also be including a referral link in the description below, which will get you discounts on your trading fees. I have been doing my taxes now for a couple of weeks and those trading fees, I haven't even gone through all of the exchanges that I've been trading on. And so far I'm sort of consolidating everything. And dude, I am freaking shocked at just how much we pay, how much those trading fees really build up. So make sure you're using the referral code. Um, if not ours, use someone else's, but use the code. That way you get a discount on your trading fees. One plus point about using the one below is that you can get some $8,000 in deposit bonuses. Yes, there are steps that you're going to need to follow to get the deposit bonus. So make sure you're following the steps as well. Okay, once again, I'll be linking it below just to help you guys out. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first fill in the blanks of the OCO order. And then I'll tell you exactly what it is that we're trying to execute here. Okay, now the because this is a demonstration, because I wanted to sort of trigger while we're doing the demonstration, that way you guys get a good visual on what just happened. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on the TA. My sort of primary focus is to make sure the bid actually goes through during the demonstration. Okay, so let me just go ahead and fill this out quickly. Okay, cool. So now I've got, gone ahead and filled out the blanks. Uh, hopefully, uh, price doesn't move too fast. But anyways, the fixed price that I put in there is $21,000. So I'm basically saying that, hey, BitGet, if price comes down, if Bitcoin comes down to $21,000, please go ahead and buy Bitcoin for me at $21,000. Okay. However, if price fails to come down to $21,000 and instead price starts going up and we actually hit $22,376. Okay. If price gets up to $22,376, Please go ahead and place a bid for me at $22,375.5. Right, so that is the conditional order that I have now expressed on, um, on this card. Right, so now if I go ahead and I've, I've done that for a total of 0 0.0048 BTC, which is approximately $100. Right, now if I go ahead and click on buy you're going to be presented with this pop-up card, basically confirming the order with you. Now, what's cool about this is that, hey, you get a little disclaimer here telling you exactly what it is that you're trying to well execute. It says when the last price is greater than, greater than or equal to 22,376 USDT, a buy order of 0.0048 BTC will be placed at the price of 22,375.5. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on confirm. Now, as soon as I hit confirm, if I scroll down to my open orders list, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my big head. I bring it down to the corner right here. You'll see that I'm on my open orders list. I now have, have an OCO order that is active. Now, um, technically, this order that you see is actually two orders wrapped in one. Okay, the first order is the one at $21,000, which is that pullback order that we have. Right. And the second order is up above us at 22,376. So essentially what I'm trying to express here, I'm telling BitGet, I'm like, hey, BitGet, if Bitcoin gets up to this number, I think we're going up further. Okay, at which point I want you to place a buy for me at 22,375.50. Okay, for a total of 0 0.0048. So this technically is two orders wrapped in one. Now, depending on which one goes through first, the other one gets canceled immediately okay so now if 22376 hits first my order at twenty one thousand dollars gets cancelled okay now that is the beauty of these oco conditional orders you basically get to have two orders wrapped in one that way you are prepared for both sides of the trade okay just in case price comes down you have a bit there but hey in case price goes up you have a bit there as well now when is this usually beneficial well let's just say that you have very limited amounts of liquidity you cannot possibly place a bid at twenty one thousand dollars and also place a bid at twenty two thousand three hundred seventy six dollars okay you only have enough liquidity for one region right 
In that case, it's easier to use an OCO order to make sure that you have both sides of that trade covered. Alrighty, because if you really try and go ahead and put in two separate bids and you don't have enough liquidity, say you only have $100 to play with, put in a bid at $21,000, that $100 of yours is sort of locked in. You, can, you cannot go ahead and then put in another bid on top for another $100. Okay, if that's all the liquidity that you have, that is all the liquidity you have. So an OCO order allows you to lock in your bids on both sides, both sides of the market for a limited amount of liquidity. Alrighty. So um, yeah, let's wait for this to go through. It doesn't seem like it wants to go through. Price is falling as we speak. So now we wait. Coins volatility is so freaking dead. Come on, like it's literally just moving in dojis over the past couple of days. Let's go Bitcoin. Okay, hopefully we get our bids soon. <laughs> Bitcoin just closed a 12 hour candle, man. This price action has been so bloody stubborn. Um, but yeah, we're set currently sitting at 22,367. Come on. We can do another $10. Let's get our bid in. So the way I've structured it is so that the trigger price, basically the bid on top goes through, okay? That breakout buy goes through and not the pullback. I mean, the pullback is at 21,000. We're very far from that right now, at least for the given volatility. Okay, we're about to get it. And we got it! Yeah! All right, you'll see that the order now disappeared from my list. Now, in fact, if I get on over to my limit orders, notice how price just rallied from there, right? So now we're sitting at $22,379. But now what this has really done is that because the trigger order went through, okay? Now remember the, the parameters of my bid. I said, okay, if price gets up to $22,376, bid get, please go ahead and place a bid for me at $22,375. OK, but now this order is currently on the order book at twenty two thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars. All right. So now um, as soon as price gets down to twenty two thousand three hundred seventy five dollars, hopefully it does it in this go. Um, this bid then gets executed. Perfect. Now that that got executed, let's get on over to our order history to see what really happened there. Right. Now, remember, what we're trying to execute here was an OCO order. It means one cancels the other. As soon as one of the trade goes through, the other one gets canceled. Okay, so now the bid that got canceled here was our pullback bid at $21,000. Now, if you look at the OCO limit order here at $21,000, you'll see that the status of that bid was canceled. Okay, that was the bid that got canceled. So which one was the one that actually went through? Which was the one that got executed? Well, the one on top at $22,376, okay, that was the conditional buy, right? That's what I told BitGet. I'm like, hey, BitGet, if price comes down to $21,000 first, please buy for me there. However, if we fail to come down to $21,000 and instead, if price goes up to $23,376, go ahead and place a buy for me there then, right? So that's the one that went through. I structured it in such a way that it was the limit order that went through, okay? So you'll see that, okay, um, Krisha, as soon as price went up to $23,376, we did as you asked and we placed a bid for you at $23,375. Okay, and that is the bid that got executed. All right, and what did I get in return? I got a total of 0 0.0048 BTC, which is equivalent to around $100 of Bitcoin. Alrighty, so that is how you can get your conditional buy orders in just in case you're not on your computer, just in case you have very limited amounts of liquidity to deal with. You want to place it on both sides of the book, but you don't have too much money to be able to do that. Okay, you can either have one or the other. What this allows you to do it, it helps you place your bid on both sides of the trade just in case. And yeah, this is how you basically set in those conditional buy orders using the OCO feature. Alrighty, now this technically wraps up our OCO order segment. Now, for those of you who want to know how to use an OCO order to place a stop loss and a take profit on any one of your given positions, I have already covered that in the previous video, which I will be attaching here on the end screen. So go ahead and check it out. If you guys enjoyed this video and if you got some valuable insight from here, make sure to hit the likes. And if you haven't already subscribed, well, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe as well if you're looking for more of this kind of content. Now, we do have a Discord chat and if you, well, if 
you're looking for a cool community to talk crypto and markets with, come on in, join the Discord chat. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in there. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Would this trade safely, trade stress-free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way. Ciao, you guys.